The Little Paris Bookshop, 2015, a novel by German author and journalist Nina George, follows literary apothecary Jean Perdue as he sets off in his barge cum bookstore to heal the wounds of a long-lost love, collecting a family of misfits along the way. Upon publication, the book quickly became an international bestseller, with more than half a million copies sold in 28 languages. Described as a charming novel that believes in the healing properties of fiction, romance, and a summer in the south of France, Kirkus reviews, The Little Paris Bookshop was generally well received by critics. Although some reviewers found it somewhat slight and excessively similar to Joanne Harris's Chocolate. Jean Perdue lives in an apartment block in Paris's Marais district, where he is friendly but distant with a whole host of eccentric neighbors. There is the blind cheer potus chi and the claustrophobic pianist Clara Violette, but the biggest nuisance to Jean is Max Jordan, a hip earmuff wearing American novelist who is hiding out in Paris to escape the furor over his best selling first novel. Max has repeatedly tried to befriend Jean, only to be rebuffed by the reserved Frenchman. Jean owns a bookshop, housed in a barge on the River Seine. He calls it the literary apothecary because Jean has an uncanny ability to size up the psychic ailments of his customers, existential doubt, disappointment, various fears, and prescribe exactly the right book to shake them out of their doldrums. One ailment, however, has proven intractable to the apothecary, his own depression. Twenty years ago, the great love of his life left him without explanation. Jean is so traumatized by her loss that he cannot even name her in his head, thinking of her simply as. One day, a new neighbor moves into the building. Catherine is a soon-to-be divorced woman of about Jean's age. She has sad gray eyes and no furniture of her own. Jean hears her crying. He calls on her to deliver a spare table and a stack of books, chosen to alleviate heartbreak. The table is from a room that Jean has kept locked since the disappearance of his one true love, and in one of its drawers, Catherine discovers a letter addressed to Jean. She asks Jean about it, and he explains that the letter is from his former lover, whom he finally names as Manon. He tells Catherine about her, she was a Provencal woman who lived always in the now until one day, she disappeared, leaving only this letter. Jean has been unable to read it. Catherine demands that Jean reads the letter. In a tense moment, they kiss, and finally, Jean feels free enough of his grief to open the letter. Its contents dispel his happiness. The letter reveals that Manon returned to her husband a winogrower in Provence because she had terminal cancer. She left the letter because she wanted Jean to visit her before she died, to say goodbye. Overcome with guilt and grief, Jean realizes he cannot pursue his budding relationship with Catherine until he has laid Manon's ghost to rest. He unmoors his barge and sets off for Provence, intending to travel south by water to find answers to his dreams. He hasn't gone very far before he finds a stowaway, Max Jordan, who reveals that he is suffering from writer's block and unable to follow up his successful debut. As the odd couple passes gorgeous scenery and meets eccentric characters, selling books to buy food, they open up to one another. Jean recalls happy memories of nature's holidays with Manon, he had run, naked and howling, up and down the fine, white sand beaches, while Manon's hair dangled over her breasts as she rode naked. Max responds with memories of his troubled childhood. Along the way, they pick up Cuneo, a Neapolitan chef who creates sumptuous Provencal meals in the barge's kitchen. Cuneo lost the love of his life too in his case after just one night and he has been looking for her ever since. Purdue wonders, can eating heal you? With every bite of food steeped in the herbs and oils of Provence, he seemed to absorb a little more of the land that lay ahead already he could taste the wild banks of the Loire, covered in forests and vineyards, an eccentric and renowned novelist completes the party. These two begin to fall in love, while Max and Jean begin to feel an almost father-son affection for one another. The barge arrives in Provence. With the help of his new friends, Jean has learned to forgive himself for his mistakes and to treasure the love he enjoyed, even though Manon is lost. He is forgiven by Manon's widower and feels at peace with her memory. The gang sets off for Paris, where Jean is reunited with Catherine and begins to look forward to the rest of his life. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.